power is another term that has a very special meaning in physics that is not the same as what we use in daily life. In physics, we use big P for power, and it is defined as the rate at which work is done, or the rate at which energy is transferred. P power equals to work or energy transferred divided by the time. So work over time gives you power. Because work equals to force times displacement times cosine the angle between the two. So this is also power. And what do you think the displacement divided by time gives you? It is velocity. So power also equals to force times the velocity times cosine the angle between the two. Now this will be the angle between the force and the velocity. That is the angle between the force and the displacement. What do you think the unit for power is? It is work in joules divided by time in seconds. So the standard unit for power is joules per second, and we give it a special name. We use a big W for watts. So if you have a 1600 watt hair dryer, it means that at the hottest and the highest setting, the hair dryer uses 1600 joules every second. Watts is named after Scottish engineer James Watt. In 1763, Watt was asked to repair a steam engine, and he noticed quite a lot of deficiencies of the engine. So he began to design and make his own vastly improved steam engines, and became very successful. In 1782, a sawmill ordered an engine that can replace 12 horses. That prompted Watt to carefully measure the average work a good horse can do in a second and called it a horsepower. And then he labeled his steam engine's output power in terms of horsepower. In order not to be accused of exaggerating the power of his steam engines, he exaggerated a horse's power by 50% to get the 746 watts for horsepower. So 746 watts equals to 1 horsepower. By the way, you do not have to memorize this number. Now let's try a problem. A motorcycle generates 8 horsepower when traveling at 30 meters per second constant velocity on level road. What is the average force exerted on the motorcycle due to friction and air resistance? So we have power given, and power is uh, work over time. And uh, since we're given the velocity and we're asked to find the force, it can be convenient to use uh, this equation, the force times the velocity times cosine the angle between the two. Now the power is uh, 8 horsepower, but that is not the standard unit. So we'll have to convert it to watts. Every horsepower equals to 746 watts, so we have to multiply this by 746 to get the wattage for the power. And that's uh, force times the velocity, 30. Now for the cosine part. In most of the power problems, the cosine part is 1. Because in most of these problems, the force and the displacement or the force and the velocity are in the same direction. So this cosine is 1, and therefore we'll get the force to be 199 newtons. Here's another problem. The power output rating of a water pump is 4,000 watts. If water is to be pumped from 20 meters below, how much mass of water can be pumped up per minute? Ignore viscosity and friction.
Again, we have power given here, and we can use power equals to work over time. And uh, now we have displacement, so we can use the force times displacement. Force, if we're lifting a mass m of water, that means uh, the lifting force has to be mg. So the pump can overcome the gravitational force. That's the minimum force if there is no acceleration. And so the force times the displacement, 20, and the cosine part is just going to be 1, divided by time, and we're looking at 1 minute, so it's 60 seconds. So this would equal to, the power is 4,000 watts. And uh, we don't know the mass. If I use g equals to 10, then this is what I have. And that means uh, I'm going to get mass is 1,200 kilograms. So the pump can pump 1,200 kilograms of water in a minute.